Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin with Day 273, September 29th, Zechariah chapters 12 to 14. Israel's Common Consolation Overview Consolation is coming for the people of God, and Zechariah closes his prophecy with a stirring portrayal of what will happen on that day. God will destroy Jerusalem's enemies, the nation will be cleansed of idols and false prophets, mountains will move, hard hearts will melt, and the Lord will be king over all the earth. Chapter 14 verse 9. What began as a vision of horror in chapters 1 and 2 ends as a vision of hope. Chapter 12. Jerusalem has found strength, deliverance. Chapter 13. The Lord is our God, delight. Chapter 14, the Lord will be king, dominion, insight, Jerusalem in the forefront, Zechariah 14, 1 to 21. In chapter 14, you will find at least eight specific references to the city of Jerusalem, an important clue to the original intent of Zechariah's visions and to God's program on that day. Insight, a critical mount, Zechariah 14, 4. The Mount of Olives, 14.4, is mentioned by name twice and described by location once. In the Old Testament, often in the New, in nearly every case it represents crisis, betrayal, and judgment. 1 Kings 1, 1 1-7, Solomon built altars to pagan gods. 2 Samuel 15, verse 30, David wept over Absalom's betrayal. Zechariah 14, the last judgment. Matthew 21, 17 to 19. Jesus cursed the fig tree as a sign of judgment on Israel. Matthew 24 and Mark 13. Jesus prophesied coming judgment. Matthew 26, verses 30 to 42. Jesus agonized in the garden of Gethsemane. Luke 19, verses 30 to 44. Jesus wept over Jerusalem's coming destruction. John 18, verses 1 to 3, Judas betrayed Jesus. Zechariah chapter 12, Future Deliverance for Jerusalem. This message concerning the fate of Israel came from the Lord. This message is from the Lord, who stretched out the heavens, laid the foundations of the earth, and formed the human spirit. I will make Jerusalem like an intoxicating drink, that makes the nearby nations stagger when they send their armies to besiege Jerusalem and Judah. On that day, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock. All the nations will gather against it to try to move it, but they will only hurt themselves. On that day, says the Lord, I will cause every horse to panic and every rider to lose his nerve. I will watch over the people of Judah, but I will blind all the horses of their enemies. And the clans of Judah will say to themselves, The people of Jerusalem have found strength in the Lord of heaven's armies, their God. On that day, I will make the clans of Judah like a flame that sets a woodpile ablaze, or like a burning torch among sheaves of grain. They will burn up all the neighboring nations right and left, while the people living in Jerusalem remain secure. The Lord will give victory to the rest of Judah first, before Jerusalem, so that the people of Jerusalem and the royal line of David will not have greater honor than the rest of Judah. On that day, the Lord will defend the people of Jerusalem. The weakest among them will be as mighty as King David. And the royal descendants will be like God, like the angel of the Lord who goes before them. For on that day I will begin to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Then I will pour out a spirit of grace 
in prayer on the family of David and on the people of Jerusalem. They will look on me whom they have pierced and mourn for him as for an only son. They will grieve bitterly for him as for a firstborn son who has died. The sorrow and mourning in Jerusalem on that day will be like the great mourning for Hadad Raman in the valley of Megiddo. All Israel will mourn each clan by itself and with the husbands separate from their wives. The clan of David will mourn alone, as will the clan of Nathan, the clan of Levi, and the clan of Shimei. Each of the surviving clans from Judah will mourn separately and with the husbands separate from their wives. Zechariah chapter 13. A fountain of cleansing. On that day, a fountain will be opened for the dynasty of David and for the people of Jerusalem. A fountain to cleanse them from all their sins and impurity. And on that day, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will erase idol worship throughout the land, so that even the names of the idols will be forgotten. I will remove from the land both the false prophets and the spirit of impurity that came with them. If anyone continues to prophesy, his own father and mother will tell him, You must die, for you have prophesied lies in the name of the Lord. And as he prophesies, his own father and mother will stab him. On that day, people will be ashamed to claim the prophetic gift. No one will pretend to be a prophet by wearing prophet's clothes. He will say, I'm no prophet, I'm a farmer. I began working for a farmer as a boy, and if someone asks, then what about those wounds on your chest? He will say, I was wounded at my friend's house. The scattering of the sheep. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, the man who is my partner, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Strike down the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. And I will turn against the lambs. Two-thirds of the people in the land will be cut off and die, says the Lord. But one-third will be left in the land. I will bring that group through the fire and make them pure. I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, These are my people. And they will say, The Lord is our God. Zechariah chapter 14. The Lord will rule the earth. Watch for the day of the Lord is coming when your possessions will be plundered right in front of you. I will gather all the nations to fight against Jerusalem. The city will be taken. The houses looted and the women raped. Half the population will be taken into captivity and the rest will be left among the ruins of the city. Then the Lord will go out to fight against those nations as he has fought in times past. On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will split apart, making a wide valley running from east to west. Half the mountain will move toward the north and half toward the south. You will flee through this valley, for it will reach across to Azal. Yes, you will flee as you did from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come, and all his holy ones with him. On that day the sources of light will no longer shine, yet there will be continuous day. Only the Lord knows how this can happen. There will be no normal day and night, for at evening time it will still be light. On that day, life-giving waters will flow out from Jerusalem, half towards the Dead Sea and half toward the Mediterranean, flowing continuously in both summer and winter. And the Lord will be the king over all the earth. On that day, there will be one Lord. His name alone will be worshipped. All the land from Geba, north of Judah, to Raman, south of Jerusalem, will become one vast plain. But Jerusalem will be raised up in its original place and will be inhabited all the way from the Benjamin Gate over to the site of the Old Gate, then to the Corner Gate, and from the Tower of Hananel to the King's Wine Presses. And Jerusalem will be filled, safe at last, never again to be cursed and destroyed. And the Lord will send a plague on all the nations that fought against Jerusalem. Their people will become like walking corpses, their flesh rotting away. 
Their eyes will rot in their sockets and their tongues will rot in their mouths. On that day, they will be terrified, stricken by the Lord with great panic. They will fight their neighbors hand to hand. Judah too will be fighting at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the neighboring nations will be captured. Great quantities of gold and silver and fine clothing. This same plague will strike the horses, mules, camels, donkeys, and all the other animals in the enemy camps. In the end, the enemies of Jerusalem who survived the plague will go up to Jerusalem each year to worship the king, the Lord of Heaven's armies, and to celebrate the festival of shelters. Any nation in the world that refuses to come to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of Heaven's armies, will have no rain. If the people of Egypt refuse to attend the festival, the Lord will punish them with the same plague that he sends on the other nations who refuse to go. Egypt and the other nations will all be punished if they don't go to celebrate the festival of shelters. On that day, even the harness bells of the horses will be inscribed with these words, Holy to the Lord! And the cooking pots in the temple of the Lord will be as sacred as the basins used besides the altar. In fact, every cooking pot in Jerusalem and Judah will be holy to the Lord of Heaven's armies. All who come to worship will be free to use any of these pots to boil their sacrifices. And on that day, there will no longer be traitors in the temple of the Lord of Heaven's armies. My Daily Walk if you had to select the three strongest men in the Bible, who would you pick? Perhaps you chose men like Samson or David or Joshua, men of warfare, men of the outdoors. But did you ever stop to think that some of the strongest men in the Bible were, from a physical point of view, some of the weakest? Daniel, whose greatest claim to fame was sitting quietly in the corner of a lion's den. Jeremiah, who turned into a fountain of tears at the thought of his exiled people. Timothy, who stood up to heretics despite his young age, poor health, and timid temperament. As Zechariah looks ahead on the prophetic calendar, he predicts, The weakest among them will be as mighty as King David. Chapter 12, verse 8. Their strength will come, not from physical, material, or military superiority, but from their relationship to God. Is that truth of you today? Regardless of your physical stamina or financial condition, you can be strong in the Lord. Let us pray not for lighter burdens, but for stronger backs. That is so true and awesome. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading along with you. Have a great day, and keep on keeping on. And God bless, and I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, Peace.